Hi everyone, and welcome to Sapphire Rose's Superliminal All Collectible Speedrun Tutorial. I'm Sam Wise, and in this video, we'll be going over the level Blackout. Whether you're just aiming to find all the hidden collectibles for the first time, or trying to get involved with the speedrun, this guide will show tips and tricks to help you get started. Blackout is a long, trick-heavy level, but not a particularly difficult one. Immediately upon starting the level, go find the Constellation Room in the cabinets. This one is exceptionally easy to forget, so try to keep that in mind. This one is just dead center above the door, so it should be easy to collect. Once it's done, use Restart Level instead of Reset to Checkpoint to both skip walking time and also since you already know the blind's navigation during the fade-in. In this flickering hallway, there are 8 total fire extinguishers. If you're quick enough with the navigation, you won't have to find any in the dark. Next we reach the trick that takes up almost a third of the level, the canister launch. This trick involves taking a gas canister from the start of Blackout to slightly after the pit jump to perform a warp launch. The barriers that usually block you from taking them with you aren't as solid as you may think. Hold the canister vertically upright and size it to at least 3 quarters of the door height, then drop it and push through quickly. It should slide right through, but you may have to try a couple times. Another option if you fail is to use the door slam to push it through. To do this, place the canister close to the hinges of the door at any size and hope for the best. After this, progress past the pit jump and use the long hallway to set up a warp launch. When you reach the freezer curtains, jump and let go to launch. You're aiming for the wall ahead and slightly to the right. Once you land on it, walk forwards until you see the slight bump in the geometry pointed out here. Then jump forwards and to the right to cross an invisible floor towards the red exit sign. Once you grab it, you immediately head into the next trick of the level. A final thing to note is that the warp launch, for currently unknown reasons, can occasionally give you a much higher launch than usual. If this happens, just navigate to above the room with the sign and wait to fall down, then continue as usual. The alternative to this strat is simply the regular glitchless movement through the level, then make sure you grab the sign afterwards. Next up we've got... Um... Blind and Maze. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay. This trick is a fairly simple warp launch, with the only difficulty coming from the small initial size of the object if he performs the canister launch. Resize the red sign as best as you can while moving towards the maze, remembering the extinguisher, and prep it for a warp launch. Move through the first stage of the maze, and once you're through, aim to launch up here. Once you've got it, you can go ahead and jump down. If you find this launch is dropping the sign on the floor instead of launching you, then the sign was slightly too small and clipped out of you when you got too close to the wall. You can test if this will be an issue by skating close to the walls earlier in the maze. If it remains invisible, this trick will work. The alternate strat is fairly self-explanatory, though it's worth noting that all but the first jump on the boxes can be made without the sign. However, this relies on highly inconsistent ledge grabs and is not recommended. There's not much more for me to say, so let's just see Sapphire do it. Once you know where to go, it's just a few resizes, jumps, and some good click timing. After the blue pawn, continue as normal until the generator room. By the way, we refer to the light as red out because the warp launch essentially makes the sign so big it lights the rest of the level. Once 
When you reach this room, immediately take a hard right and look into the first gap in the shelving there. Through the seam, you can grab the blueprint through the wall with this lineup. It helps to hold W since it can jam you into the shelves just a little bit. Next, hit the generator, then grab a can of beans from the left side. Then backtrack slightly and use the beans to get over the wall that's now on your right. From here, you have two options for the type of launch you want to do. You can perform an unusual warp launch, or a rare launch called a jump launch. The warp launch simply involves making the can massive, then looking straight down. It should disappear like a regular warp launch, at which point you can find the lineup and simply let go to launch. The alternative is a jump launch. Despite the name, this specific jump launch doesn't require a jump at all. It has the same speed and difficulty as the warp launch, but has the benefit of not requiring as much of a resize as the warp launch. It is performed by making the object a little taller than the player height, then grabbing from close range and looking downwards until the bean's model, not the outline, intersects the player. Go to the right window and release the launch. This launch is more precise, as it will only work when the object's physical model is inside yours, which often does not occur when facing fully downwards. However, since the can does not have to be anywhere near as massive as the warp launch requires, they have equal ratings. Just pick whichever you prefer. The glitchless alternative to this strat is simply using the beans to parkour your way up. Let's see how it's done. After grabbing the second blue pawn of the level, reset to checkpoint, remember to grab the generator in the dark, then finish the level. See you in clone!